Um, Salaam alaikum. Good evening, everyone. It's a real pleasure being with you today in this very uh, exciting and impressive uh, meeting, um, and especially this session talking about um, guidelines and their uh, impact and implementation specifically in our region. Um, a quote from the uh, American College of Cardiology, American Heart Association guidelines, the medical profession should be, play a central role in evaluating the evidence related to drugs, devices, and procedures. When properly applied, expert analysis of available data on the benefits and risks of these therapies and procedures can improve the quality of care, optimize patient outcomes, and favorably affect costs by focusing resources on the most effective strategies. Hence, clinical practice guidelines assist clinicians in selecting the best managed strategy for an individual um, patient. From the European Society of Cardiology guidelines, um, a, a clear code of uh, about guidelines that summarize and evaluate all available evidence on particular issue with the aim of assisting health professionals in selecting the best management strategies for an individual patient with a given condition, taking into account the impact on outcome as well as the risk benefit ratio. The final decisions concerning an individual patient must be made by responsible health professionals in consultation with the patient and caregiver as appropriate. Um, and that uh, really directs us and leads us into weighing how we read uh, the guidelines and how we take it. Um, a, a very uh, interesting uh, quote from Milton Packer, practitioners who rely on them, on guidelines for clinical decision making, engage in an unnecessary form of self-deception. Self Those who read them literally and adhere to them strictly do not practice evidence-based medicine and those who delve into them in a search for the truth are destined to be disappointed. So we really have to weigh uh, the guidelines and the prior, our practice with the guidelines. What works for some place might not work for another, what works for some patient might not work for uh, another one. And um, only through in-country capacity development can we attain long-term solutions to our health needs. Research led by in-country scientists makes it possible to incorporate local, regional, state, and national factors in how resources are best spent. And this research also addresses many of the public health challenges faster, better, and more cost effectively. I'm saying that maybe the guidelines of the ACC or maybe the guidelines of the American or the European are not those who should be implemented or used in the Middle East, for example. Some of the data in heart failure in the Middle East. So for many years, data about heart failure was only limited to the Western countries. But in the last years, well-designed heart failure registries have been conducted in many developing uh, countries, inclu including our region, um, with, with uh, re uh, research that is even beyond registries. This data has shown that the average age of affected individuals in our region is at least 10 years younger than their Western counterparts. Heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, for example, was generally underrepresented in these registries to less than 30% of the whole population of heart failure. Now, whether it's, it's a selection bias, is it true, needs more uh, 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 effort to look at. Coronary artery disease constitutes about 55% of causes of heart failure in this region in comparison to about 70% in the Western uh, countries. So, uh, for example, uh, a, the uh, first registry in the Middle East Arab countries in Saudi Arabia, the Hearts uh, Registry, uh, was conducted looking um, uh, uh, at acute heart failure as well as chronic heart failure. And we've found like, for example, in the acute hearts registry that, as I mentioned, let the, our age in the region of patient, patients affected with heart failure is at least 10 years younger uh, than uh, the Western counterparts. Um, females were quite underrepresented as well. 
And interestingly, um, or unfortunately, only 27% had a uh, what was classified as a HEF, PEF, or heart failure preserved ejection fraction, much less than uh, the worst. Um, ischemic etiology uh, was uh, more or less uh, the same to some extent and lower in some others. But what was really striking and, and, and has been um, universally found in all of our registries was the higher, significantly higher uh, incidence of uh, um, diabetes. So uh, at, le in, in at least 64% in the acute registry. Heart, uh, heart hypertension was more or less the same. Now, the chronic uh, hearts, hearts chronic, uh, which was also published looking at these uh, patients, showed quite similar um, data um, with the age being much younger than the West um, uh, and a preserved ejection fraction, a very low proportion, and diabetes being much higher uh, than, uh, than the West, ischemic etiology much lower. Now, m some might argue that these were only um, heart failure uh, programs in, in higher centers in the kingdom, but it gives an, an idea about the difference that we see between um, different worlds. Um, the Gulf Care Registry, looking at heart failure in a bigger region, including the, the, uh, the rest of the Gulf states, um, uh, with, with Saudi Arabia, including Kuwait, Bahrain, Qatar, UAE, Oman, and Yemen, that had quite similar uh, data showing that the mean age was more than 10 years younger than uh, the Western uh, population and showing that um, uh, hypertension and diabetes being significantly uh, higher than the West. And uh, um, it, as you can see, coronary artery disease was lower. Um, interestingly, in the Saudi population and the, um, uh, uh, the Gulf in general, atrial fibrillation was much less. Um, many explanations of that were probably a younger age of uh, the population uh, study. Etiology, as I uh, said, um, although uh, uh, ischemic heart disease is uh, the highest as an etiology in uh, the region, but it's much less than, than others. Valver heart disease, interestingly, is not that high as we, we thought. Um, uh, ischemic heart disease is followed by hypertension and cardiomyopathy, probably as the main causes of uh, heart failure in our region. Um, now, one of the, the important uh, dif differences in striking factors was uh, the uh, precipitating factors. In our region, non-compliance is a big issue. Non-compliance to medication, non-compliance to, uh, to, uh, to uh, you know, lifestyle modification to instructions and follow-ups is very important. Um, nevertheless, acute coronary syndrome and infection are still uh, common and uh, other causes of, of decompensation or precipitation has also been uh, found. But uh, non-compliance is an important factor that had to be uh, or has to be addressed uh, when we talk about heart failure in the region. So that made us look into uh, publishing and actually writing our own guidelines, touching on these important uh, factors and differences. Um, one of the, uh, uh, I believe, um, uh, major contribution was our Saudi Heart Association guidelines uh, for the management of uh, uh, heart failure, which was published in 2019 and currently uh, under uh, update uh, because of the new data available. Now, um, one of the, the things that we find uh, in dif in, in, uh, quite difficult in reading guidelines is addressing the actual uh, strength of evidence. We, we wanted to make it as simple as possible, uh, color-coded and easy to read, um, uh, indicating the class uh, of, uh, of recommendation being recommended when you have the highest level of recommendation, evidence that has been given uh, that treatment or procedure is useful and effective. 
The second was should be considered then there because the evidence is with, in favor uh, of the usefulness or may be considered when there's conflicting evidence and opinion about efficacy and not recommended uh, when it's uh, uh, when it's either not useful or, or harmful. Now, these all could be subdivided into other groups as well, but making it as simple for the reader to, uh, to grasp it uh, is, is what we uh, went through. Um, uh, just as an example, um, I want to give some example of uh, uh, differences or differentiations that we, we touched on and pushed on in, in, in the guidelines, uh, just taking consideration. Uh, when we, it's always confusing uh, when we talk about the cutoff for ejection a fraction, and many people would question what's the difference between a 40 and a 41 or a 39. Um, but for, for the ease of managing patients and classifying them, um, I know the, the new terminology that came up with mid-range heart failure was, uh, was ch just change in the newer guidelines as mildly reduced uh, ejection fraction. And this is probably what we're going to go for for the updated as well. But we chose to the terminology borderline ejection fraction when it was between uh, 41 to 49, um, while less than 40 is reduced and above 50 uh, is preserved. A lot of discussion right now eh, that it may be even um, the preserved or the normal should be pushed even higher uh, than 55 or, or 60 uh, because of the newer evidence. These are all things that I think should be incorporated in the updated uh, guidelines. Now we tried to use um, simple uh, graphs and, and diagrams in, in addressing uh, the, the guidelines. Um, for example, uh, talking about the etiology of heart failure and whether it's in a disease of the myocardium and its examples or a problem with uh, the loading and uh, its uh, examples. Um, then touching on diagnosis of heart failure. Now, one of the biggest challenges in our region is uh, addressing the use of biomarkers. Um, unfortunately, there are many uh, hospitals and centers that do not um, have or do not uh, see the, the importance of biomarkers. We stressed on that very clearly in the guidelines to make it uh, a priority uh, to be available and used as a diagnostic marker, very importantly, um, early on in the diagnosis of uh, heart failure after addressing the signs and symptoms of heart failure. And, and if, if they are negative, then it, the diagnosis is very uh, unlikely. Um, and nevertheless, if you still have the high suspicion and uh, a cardiologist should be consulted in echocardiography, uh, should be done. If it's positive, um, then then you there it is. You have your diagnosis, and you should go through the the rest of the workup as recommended. <clears throat> HFPF's diagnosis is always challenging, and as I said, maybe that's one of the reasons it was underrepresented in our registries. Uh, I, I think it's underdiagnosed and uh, being seen by different special subspecialties, um, example, uh, internal medicine or GPs or family medicine and not seen by the cardiologist and that's why they're missed. And we touched very importantly on uh, stressing the, the presence of uh, heart failure, um, the, the importance of having the clear signs and symptoms of heart failure with a preserved ejection fraction should really push the, the the physician and clinician to consider uh, strongly the presence of uh, heart failure preserved ejection fraction. Now, that would be strengthened by the presence of uh, evidence of diastolic dysfunction uh, on echo or right heart cath and elevated natriuretic peptides, again, stressing the importance of natriuretic peptides. Um, we did stress on, on the importance of recommendations for cardiac imaging, uh, all through the, 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 the routine transthoracic echoes and trans 
uh, uh, and their their timing and 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 follow up and the use of of uh, of uh, Doppler velocities, then as addressing of course ejection uh, fraction. But one important thing that is is lacking from the uh, the uh, thoughts of many of our physicians and clinicians is cardiac uh, MRI. Our cardiac MR is very important and, and, and very much uh, considered nowadays in assessing and diagnosing and following our patients um, with uh, heart failure and has been given a high recommendation uh, in assessment of patients with cardiomyopathy uh, um, and uh, in characterization of myocardial tissue when suspected myocarditis or consultative diseases like amyloidosis and sarcoidosis. <clears throat> Just to stress on the importance of it being green, highly recommended. Um, now, uh, going into invasive and the discussion of the, the need for invasive coronary angiography has been addressed as well. As um, uh, we all know that this is a discussion of controversy, but putting the recommendations and the criteria for when to go for invasive procedures or not, um, and, and, and the need has been addressed very clearly in, in the guidelines and when to reassess these patients as well. Genetic testing, unfortunately, is not uh, available, readily available in many centers and only uh, a, a very few number of centers can, can afford doing that. But genetic counseling is at least recommended in patients with uh, inherited uh, cardiomyopathies, hypertrophic and idiopathic dilated cardiomyopathy and ARBC. Uh, and should be uh, and should and should be addressed. Uh, a very important uh, section has been put on prevention, as we've shown um, a lot of, of comorbidities, specifically diabetes uh, and hypertension and obesity in our region. So uh, an important, uh, a strong section about prevention of heart failure was addressed, and I think is a is a very important and necessary point in our region specifically to uh, stress on. Uh, prevention and heart failure. Um, now, then we, we have a clear section on uh, heart failure with uh, reduced ejection fraction and preserved ejection fraction management, addressing the newer updates and the, uh, the most updated uh, medications. Of course, this was 2019. Right now, the reason for updating is the, the availability of newer uh, medications that should be incorporated and the algorithm in using them and the timing of using them uh, has been addressed very well. And the, the need for availability of these medications in many uh, of the regions. Again, comorbidities are very important in, in heart failure, whether it's anemia, diabetes, uh, depression, and all have been addressed clearly in uh, the guidelines and should be followed uh, uh, deliberately. Uh, cancer as well, and, and uh, the, the cardiotoxicity from many of chemotherapies, and addressing the management of these patients uh, has been uh, addressed. Um, a clear section on acute heart failure and its management. Unfortunately, not much has been uh, changed in, in the management of acute heart failure, but it is an important section to touch on. Um, now, a very challenging topic that we, we addressed is mechanical circuitry support and heart transplantation, not readily available in, in many centers but it is, is still uh, an important consideration and has been, as you've seen, given a, a, a yellow should be considered uh, in, in patients with the criteria that would recommend patients being with, uh, with advanced heart failure being referred to the appropriate centers for mechanical circuitry support and uh, transplantation and considered. Now, a very important uh, part is a multidisciplinary approach we really believe in the need for multidisciplinary team in heart failure. This has been addressed clearly in the uh, guidelines, in addition to the importance of uh, exercise uh, as uh, a means of managing patients with heart failure. Now, importantly, very importantly, I believe whenever you have uh, um, a, a chronic disease and a program that addresses that disease, you need to have clear performance measures, clear KPIs to, to, to track your performance, to indicate your, your progress, to see how good you're doing and if any areas of improvement should be 
addressed and that was tackled very clearly in, the, in our guidelines as well. And using performance measures based on professional development practice guidelines should be used with the goal of improving quality of care uh, for heart failure. And many of these process related and outcome related guidelines have been addressed clearly to be followed in, uh, in, in patients with heart failure. Um, finally, uh, some, some more uh, 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 graphs and, and figures uh, and algorithms just to summarize uh, the management and the follow-up of patients and you know, what they actually need have been incorporated in the guidelines. And I think this eases a lot uh, uh, the follow up and and the and the read of guidelines and should be uh, and could be addressed uh, separately uh, to help people uh, managing uh, heart failure or any other uh, chronic disease. So uh, with with all this, I, I believe the um, as I said the the guidelines uh, locally and regionally should be um, updated uh, periodically according to the updated. Uh, evidence. Um, uh, this is just because we believe that although international guidelines um, address many of the issues, local um, and, and specific regional issues should be addressed in the regional and local guidelines. Thank you very much.